we're gonna start pulling circuits and we're gonna complete the circuits as we go. Uh, we're not gonna do any stapling right now just because that's not the way I do things. I think it looks better to staple after all the wires in the house. It looks a lot neater, it looks cleaner that way. Doing one job at a time gets you in the motion of constantly doing it. So when I'm stapling, after a while of doing it, you're constantly pulling, pulling out staples, you get easier at doing it, and it goes up a lot easier. I have my 14-2 set up here, and I have 14-3 already pulled out a little bit. Um, it's just how I'm gonna pull the circuits for these next videos. I'm gonna walk you through each episode for different rooms. And then when we get to the 12-2, I'm going to do that in a big lump sum. Today we're going to work on one of the easiest circuits to pull with the 14-2. And that's going to be bedroom 2 and bedroom 3 with the hall bath and sometimes it's the hall. But the difference between the 14-2 and the 14-3, they're basically identical except the 14-3 has a red wire in there. It has an extra wire. and what we mainly use this for is smoke detectors, three ways, and anything we need two switch legs for, like a fan light uh, in a bedroom or a family room or a fan light um, uh, a fart fan and light combo in a uh, water closet in the master bedroom. This is where I'm gonna wire right here. This is bedroom two and bedroom three. And here's the bathroom. I always pull the power wires first. I make sure I make I make sure I get power to everything and then I go back and I pull the switch legs. I do it box to box just because I don't want to get confused. I've been doing this for a long time and I know how to avoid the confusion. I don't want to uh, yeah, it's just, it's just the right way to do it. You don't want to go through and pull all the easy stuff and then go do the hard stuff. So you just want to break it up and do it as it comes to you. So I got my home run here. I kind of got it in the wrong slot. Don't fix that. My bad. My bad. It doesn't matter what slot you have it in. It's just for stapling purposes. Whenever I go to put this wire in right here, I just, I don't want to get my wires crossed up. I like to staple flat and I like to staple clean. And that's part of the reason why I staple at the end of the case. So, I've already got this all drilled out and ready to wire and I'm just gonna go ahead and start with it. So, whenever you're doing this, you constantly pull in slack into the room. And you want the extra, you know, you want to keep it smooth and, and, and nice in the room because it's going to go through the wall a lot nicer, a lot smoother, and a lot less uh, resistance. And also it looks a lot nicer. Like you don't want to end up like trying to go through a bunch of holes while it's still on the wheel. So anyways, I'm starting right here in bedroom three because it's where my home run is. And I'm just going to work my way around and put power into everything. And if I do this right and I do it clean, every box, unless it has to do with three ways, we'll talk about three ways a little bit later, but every box should have two wires in it, except for the end of the circuit. That'll just be one wire. I'm going to start this next pull from that from this receptacle to that one in the hole just because I know it's going to be smooth. But if it was a long pull, a lot of times I'll just start it in the bed, cut 
thumb back, guess it, cut it, and then push it down the hole. After a while of doing this, you start to figure out what works for you. And the reason I went up and over for this right here is because I, I didn't want to sorry I didn't want to drill this crazy corner and underneath this window so I just kept it easy on myself I'd rather get on the ladder and pull it overhead <coughs> I'd rather get on the ladder and pull it overhead than come forward work for myself I don't mind climbing up and down a ladder and if you do this type of work you're going to be on a ladder a lot so I mean it might work out on General purpose. That was all. That was all. Good. Good. You could just like. It's still, it's still low enough to be a general purpose receptacle. Now, when you have receptacles that are up high, like a lot of people want to hang TVs and stuff, that's not within code. So you have to still add a receptacle down low because up high receptacles are not considered general purpose. So here we go. There's none of those, there's none of those in this house. So. I know I said this in another video, but now we're about to run a wire to a switch box. And uh, I don't like to mark many wires. And the way that I do this is I have a certain place for everything. Now this is the switch box for the fan light in this bedroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all my powers in my switch box on the inside to the stud and then that way I can just come to it and I know that it's power when I go to cut it in. receptacle on with it. Sorry, just like a
a little bit extra in this box, I'm going to end up stapling when I get both wires down here. I'm going to end up stapling a couple here and a couple there because I have this box. And I'm going to stay on the fan and use the wires that are going to get ran to this. And it doesn't matter how you do this, as long as everything is getting power. And uh, so here's the, so that's all the power for this room, jump in the circuit. And then I went to that hall receptacle and I came back in for here. So now I'm going to go to the other room and I'm going to take it from that switch box, which is the closest to this. And I'm going to connect that and then I'm going to start looping out that bedroom with that bathroom. If it's easy to go ahead and pull the switch leg because you're already in there, my advice is just to go ahead and skip it because you want to make sure that everything has power before you start doing anything else. You want to, you want to keep your mind on the task at hand because if, if you start getting too far ahead of yourself, then you might end up losing what you're doing. All right, this is a switch box, so we're making sure that we're staying closest to the stud in that spot. So next thing in line. I kind of messed up this end trying to pull it out, so I'm just going to clip it off so I don't have a hard time taking the sheathing off when I go cut in. All right, we got a three game box here, still staying on the inside. Now, some inspectors want to give you a hard time about stressing these tabs. My inspector doesn't care. And then also, you can have two wires under one tab. It's, it's not a big deal in the area that I'm at, but I have been in areas where they don't want uh, more than one wire under each tab. And that's the same guys that are assholes about stressing the tabs. So, like I said, it doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. Next in line, we got a receptacle in this room, and I just gotta connect the rest of these receptacles. All right, I'm not pulling this wire up tight because I know that I have to come in here here soon and I have to put a staple in here. So I'm just kind of leaving just a little bit of a bend. It's the same thing for like areas like this right here. I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna pull it tight because I know that I'm gonna put a staple in there. And I usually do that within about six inches of the box. Same thing right here. I'm gonna pull it in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my staple and then I'm gonna kind of pull it tight to that staple.
Can I do something real quick? Yeah, what's up? Are you doing this? Hey, them roofers don't care about no rain. They're still out there working. Weppa! Oh, uh, we white screen up. It's got water on it. Yep. Hardly see you so, right now. I got two boxes here. One's going to be for this TV wire, and the other one is a reception. Okay, now this wire that I pulled up above, it's scraping against some metal. So you want to pull it off of the metal and put a staple in it. And when you're stapling in the ceiling, you have to staple every four foot. And that's a, that's a rule to keep in mind whenever you're running the wire, because it's easy to add staples down the wall. But then when you go in to, to add staples in the ceiling, it starts to get a little tight and it might be hard to work with. And then same thing with this side. I can see that the wire is hanging on a little bit of metal, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a staple right here just to keep it off of it. And you wanna stay off of anything metal, and that includes duct work from HVAC. Uh, I need to pause it. I need to stop it to see. I'm sure there's probably like 60 maybe. Okay, so this is the end of the circuit. And uh, so we got power to everything so far. And now, like I know that almost all y'all are new to electrical. And um, so I wanna take you the steps to make sure that your work is correct. So let's go back to where our home run came in. And let's make sure that everything is connected right now. So we got our home run coming in here. And then we jumped to this receptacle. We came out of here and we went over and we hit this one. Came out of there and we hit this one. Came out of there, we got our switch. Went to this hall receptacle. And then we went up and over and hit this other receptacle in this room. When we left that, we came back into the room and we put power to this. Went up into the bathroom, then back and we followed these receptacles in this room. 
And you want to go back and you want to make sure because if you miss one of these jumpers and you finally make it to trim out and nobody caught it, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big problem. So you, uh, missing a home run or missing a jumper is the biggest problem you can have when you're doing this. We came out of here, we hit this one, and then this is our final one. This one right here is part of another circuit for the family room, so we're not even worried about that. But this is the end. This is bedroom two, hall bath, and bedroom and bedroom three. Now we're gonna pull the switch legs. And like I said before, I done pulled out some of that 14-3 and bedrooms, family room, back porch, if it's covered, um, and, and the water closet in the master bathroom usually gets 14-3 as a switch leg. That because that's because it gives you two options for usually the red is the light and the black is the fan. It looks easier for me to pull this from the from the light, so I'm gonna start right here. Okay, and this wire coming down, I have this first slot open, nothing's in it, but that is for a power wire. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump in with this switch switch sequence. So coming into the room, this is gonna make a lot of sense later, like coming to a bathroom or coming to a kitchen, kitchen switches. So this one right here is just gonna go in slot two. And like without even looking at it, I know, like when I come in here and I trim it out, like I know what this is. For one, it's a 14-3. And for two, I know it's a switch leg because it's not in that first slot. Mm. So my personal preference with the lights is I'll just put a staple in it and leave me a little bit extra to come back and finish it. Unless it's a round box, I'm not going to finish it. So gonna put a little staple in there and find a little bit extra and then that's it I'm just gonna leave it hanging I'll come back later and I'll put it in the grommet and ground it and everything but that's for later that's for another video so since I'm already using 14.3 I'm gonna come back into this other room and I'm gonna do the same and I'm gonna do the same thing Again, I'm going in the second slot from the stud because it's a switch leg. Cut off this crap. Now I'm going to go up here and put a staple just to hold it in place. I think uh, with lights you have to have a staple within 12 inches. I try to get it within six. And when you're stapling, you don't want to drive that staple in too tight because if you if you do it too much, then that staple is going to pinch that wire so hard it's going to mess it up. Okay. So in this bathroom, I was talking about switch sequences earlier. In a bathroom, your vanity light is always the first switch when you come into a room. So I'm coming into a room. I have my powers on the inside. So switch sequence, it's going to go vanity, my tub light is going to be my third slot, and then my fan is going to be my fourth slot. And in doing this and putting them in the right order, I don't have to mark these wires. So when I go to cut in, they're going to be right there where they need to be, and I won't have to question it. Now Lennar Home likes to use LEDs above the sinks, but... This neighborhood wants the regular old fashioned, old fashioned uh, vanity lights.
and they just go behind the seat rock and we'll end up cutting them out in the trim out with a cut in box. But this is how you do this to make sure you got enough wire. So pull a bunch down, put your staple within 12 inches of the top plate. Well, not all the time, but in this case, yeah. I'll put a staple right here. A tight one. Just run it through the hole. And put a light staple. Just going to put a little bend in this. And then put a little bend right there. And then that way they have a little bit of extra to work with. When they uh, when they come in to do this in a trim out and it's not going to get pinched behind the sheet rock in the two by four. Okay, like I said, switch sequence. This one's going in slot two because it's the first light you want to switch when you come into the bathroom. All right, and my next one's going to be this tub. Okay, and I want to leave it up so I can get back into this light. So I'm just going to cut it right here. We'll come back to that later on another time. And then my last switch leg in this bathroom is going to be my bath fan. And that's going to be in this slot four right here. This hall is part of this circuit, but the light in this hall is actually coming to a box that's full of other switches for this family room. It's got a three-way for this family room. It's got a three-way for this kitchen. And I've already got to put power here anyway, so I don't want to add like any extra wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this one light on with either my family room or my kitchen, just so I don't have too many wires in a box and make it way too more complicated than it is. But I did put this plug on with it. And just look at this light. This, this light is stupid because it's returned. They, they want to put it center and they just, it's so big and stupid. They should have bumped it out somewhere else, but that's what they're going to get. <laughs> 